Good morning, this is Julia Whittup with Talk Story TV. I have with me this morning Marilyn Redman, who's returned for part three of One Writer's Journey Through Domestic Violence. Good morning, Julia. Good morning. It's good to be back with you again. Good to have you back. So, well, oh, go ahead. Where were you in your story? Well, I was moving into recovery, and I didn't really realize at the time, this was 29 years ago, uh, that I really didn't need recovery and that I needed to move out of the place I was in. Of course, it wasn't working for me because my husband tried to kill me, and I tried suicide a couple times, so obviously I needed to do something different. Um, I believe God stepped in and actually took me to treatment. I did not know I was codependent. So through that, I found the 12 steps and have had lots of counseling, but also a great amount of meditation because the answers are within. And But that also led me to places I needed more help from what could help me with my behavior and so forth to change. So um, I found all kinds of sources that came to me or became available to me. And I discovered in recovery that... Um, I, because of the abuse, incest, and physical harm I'd gone through, I was a very guilty person playing the victim by reacting to all those around me trying to protect myself instead of responding in love. And so I was emotionally stunted at the age of three, and I had to grow up and find out what love was all about. So I am this little girl trying to make it in this adult world, and I had to finally grow up and become a tear. And one of the first best pieces of information I got was to change all my negative things to positive. And in my case, I was raised with my mother saying, poor me, poor me. <laughs> and uh, an alcoholic says, poor me, poor me, poor me another drink. In her case, it was, take, give me another pill. But, uh, you know, Same thing. Some, something to fix us, right? Mm -hmm. So I, of course, looked for some person to fix me. <laughs> and that didn't work very well. So I needed to learn to release my fear, the guilt, and the shame I had and replace it with love and grace. Every time I take out a negative thought, word, or action, or idea, message, whatever it is, and replace it with love and the grace of God that I choose to call love, um, the spirit of love, I find my life gets a little better each time. So I started on an adventure, an inventory, some people call it, of finding all the things that were stopping the love in my life. That all the negativity was actually like obstacles to the love happening for me that I was looking for and all the, I was looking for love in all the wrong places. <laughs> <laughs> Just like the song. <laughs> yeah, I know what that means today because I really did. And that meant that I had to move my consciousness up into a higher power of love and get out of my ego, out of my head, out of all the crisis making, and I per per perpetuated a lot of it. I know today because that was my survival. If you're, if you're so focused on things outside of yourself, you think that you got it under control. <laughs> if I can control it, then I'll be okay. <laughs> that was my motto, so to speak. I didn't realize I was actually making it worse by doing trying to control it, and so I can't control it today. I have to surrender to a universal consciousness that knows better for me than I know and helps me move into the place I always wanted to be in the first place and I just wasn't aware of it and so my awareness is grow as I move higher and higher into consciousness by opening my heart and letting the love out instead of being fearful and protective of it which was really the problem so I needed to uh, 
learn how to receive love. That is really scary at first when you've been so damaged like I was. Um, to open your heart and actually receive love is probably the scariest decision I made in my life because I really wanted to protect myself but the problem is with protecting yourself you stay an immature little three-year-old. <laughs> uh -huh. So I had, if, if, if I was going to come into a recovery I had to change my ideas, all my ideas. In fact, I don't even have beliefs today. I just know this works because my life has changed and it is wonderful. It's like heaven on earth today. So when I moved out of my head and my ego to learn how to find the love and truth in my heart, it made all the difference. So looking at my thinking, which was very negative as a growing up and in my marriage, bear my words, I didn't know how controlling and painful they were to others. Uh, negative communication is not really communication. <laughs> it's, uh, you know, talking around the bar and you don't know how to be direct. You don't know how to express yourself. So you say, you did this, you did that. You're make, blaming them for all the problems. You don't know how to own it yourself. So to change my communication, that was probably one of the second biggest problems to hurdle was to, because I'm now coming from my heart to change my communication skills so people could really hear me instead of me attack them. Mm -hmm. I, that was a huge change for me. So, and then my actions because of this line up with what I'm thinking and what I'm saying. And so finally my thoughts, words, and actions can move from negative to positive. And now I'm at a different cause and I'm getting a different effect. And wow. this good thing started happening in my life. One day I woke up and I live a mile from where I was teaching at the time and the sun was out and the birds were chirping and I got up and I felt good and I said, oh, it's working. <laughs> <laughs> I thought I loved that. So I walked to school that day in the beautiful sunshine. So what I know today is like attracts like and what I send out is what comes back. And staying in the fear, guilt, shame and all the anger, rage, whatever was going on with me and I'm not hadn't changed it, what I send that out, that's what was coming back and hitting me and causing all my disturbances and terrible problems of feeling depressed. I didn't have the sunlight of the spirit in my life. So now I'm cleaning out that some people call it an inner house cleaning. It's kind of like going inside your own being and getting rid of all those things that are the obstacles to the sunlight of God. And because uh, you can only grow in the sunlight, I discovered. So all my childish and immature feelings were changing to becoming mature. And this is called empowerment. As you grow into this, you take your power back. And that's what I did. I always gave away my power thinking somebody would take care of me. Here I am a three-year-old, right? I've been hurt, damaged, and abused, and all these things have happened. And please, please, my mother went through the depression and because she was paranoid schizophrenic, we had no communication and the only thing she told me that was a communicative thing, we, I mean I had a roof over my head but we never talked, okay. And she said, well you marry a man to take care of you. So that's where I got that message. I'm looking for someone to take care of me. Well, uh, I've learned differently today. I take care of myself. It works out just fine. God and me do it pretty well today. <laughs> uh, actually, very well. So I'm changing into maturity by taking care of myself, not looking outside to others. And when I start taking responsibility for myself and taking care of myself, one of the first things um, in 12 Steps we have sponsors, and she said, now Marilyn, you can take care of your own needs. And I thought, now that's amazing. What's a need? <laughs> <laughs> so, so I have learned to take care of my needs. And I'm not a needy person looking to somebody else to take care of it today. And, and I had an amazing experience recently. I was on a, because my mother went through the depression and we were taught not to spend a penny because of, you know, her circumstances in childhood. I wasn't ever to spend any money. I always went without my needs being met, actually. And I had a, a, a spree at a <clears throat> particular store that was a, a good store to be able to buy what things I was looking for. And I thought, well, I'll buy this. I really needed knives because the knives I had literally 
had duct tape around them to hold the handle to the blade. <laughs> oh my God. So I went to buy some knives and they happened to have a few other things I needed. So I thought, well, because in this store there's no sales tax and I live in the state of Washington where there is, I thought, well, I'll pick them up so I don't pay sales taxes. So I bought a basket, ended up buying several things I needed. And as I'm paying for this at the check stand, the amount that showed up of what I had bought was a spiritual number so immediately I had feedback from the universe I had done the right thing and as I went through the door of leaving the, the department store the silent voice inside said Marilyn you met your needs we're proud of you oh <laughs> so I'm learning better how you know you don't just save the money and for the rainy day if you need it you buy it <laughs> that's, <laughs> not interesting. that's what money is for <laughs> it is not amazing we learn these things so in taking responsibility for myself, I'm meeting my needs, and now I can't blame others. I can't point the finger at someone else and say, well, if you shaped, this is what I did to my husband, if you quit drinking and you shaped up, our marriage would be just fine. You know, the problem with that is there's three fingers pointing back. I was the problem. I was sending out all this stuff and he was reacting and retaliating. And so I was attracting it back to me because what goes around comes around. So I had to look at, well, what's going on in my life? And I realized I create my own reality. What I send out is what is a mirror to what's going on with me that has to be the negative changed to the positive, adjusted, healed, whatever therapy map methods I need for that particular situation. And so as I started looking at I don't want, you know, I, I literally prayed, God, I do not want to have another battering and abusive marriage of 30 years of rape. So what uh, God said, now you get to become the person you want in your relationship. So I started figuring out what I wanted, which was a spiritual person, honest, loyal, trustworthy, sincere, you know, um, with integrity. And I tried to become those things. And you know what happened? I wrote them down on a piece of paper, which I find is very practical, put it in a drawer. And a couple years later, I'm in a spiritual study group, an Edgar Casey Search for God group. And here's this fellow sitting in the room. And I walked in and immediately my soul jumped out and said, you're going to have a relationship with that man. And of course, he was on a spiritual journey of recovery and his situation from his background. So it took a while for things to kind of come together, but I have today a 13-year relationship with that man of unconditional love. I attracted a person from where I changed. I changed enough that he was, you know, what I know is a sick man is not going to marry uh, or be in a relationship with a healthy woman, and a healthy woman isn't going to pick a sick man. You got to like attracts like, and, and what I definitely attracted who I was in the past. So as I become empowered, I become a whole spirit. I am, what I'm finding out is, a whole spirit. I was created in wholeness, in the image of God, my creator. So what I'm doing in recovery is bringing in all those bits and splinters to pieces of my soul to come back into wholeness. Mm -hmm. And as I do that, guess what? I feel like a whole person today, and that's empowerment. I don't give away my power to other people today. I can make I statements. I can share my feelings. I can do what is best for me and tell, you know, let the pieces fall where they may. I don't have to control the outcome to try to make sure that it's going to be set up like my little ducks in a row, like at this, you know, the shooting gallery. Mm -hmm. And uh, I can do that today. I because if you're a whole person, you know the universe is taking care of you and it will fall into the way it needs to happen. And so sometimes, did you know, I've had new changes in friendships that's going on right now in my life big time as I'm growing spiritually. I've changed my consciousness to a consciousness that doesn't match up with some people today. And I've had to stand up and take care of myself. And I have a little girl inside who I've helped grow up, that little girl inside, uh, I told her if she's ever in a place that is hurtful or damaging to her today, I am an adult enough, I will take her out of that place immediately. She does not have to stay and be hurt again. 
And I have had to do that in several situations where I realized, oh, this is not where we belong, and out the door we go. And it hasn't. It takes me quicker to see those stories today uh -huh. than it did in the past of where I don't belong. So I don't put myself in places to be hurt today. Ah, isn't that amazing? <laughs> <laughs> so I found that that's very good. So I've had to look at healing myself physically, mentally, emotionally, and spiritually, and that's what brings in the wholeness. I had to look at the broken tailbone I had from my damage part in my marriage and and I had to look at my mental messages in my ego um, you know what I know is the ego is edging God out and, and if I move further and further from God I'm gonna die and of course in my case I was the walking dead when I hit recovery uh, inside my body said you're dying so I had to change the messages to living messages after affirming the truth uh, affirmations really helped me and emotionally, I had to clean out all the very fearful, damaging, uh, every, every emotion is a connection to God or lack of connection. So as you remove the fears and the angers, the resentments, the shame, uh, then you're opening up more and more healthy emotions to flow in your life. You're opening up your heart more to the God consciousness. and changing my emotional state of mind. I'm no longer suicidal. I'm no longer uh, shame-based because I was pregnant in the 50s without being married yet. And all these things that society does to make us feel guilty. My, I went to a church that made me feel very guilty and shame-based. I didn't know it in the time my mother took me there, so there I am. So today I've found places that nurture me and sub support me in loving ways spiritually. And, of course, my spiritual life was bankrupt. I went to church my whole life and didn't know that. I mean, here I'm sitting in the church, you know, went through confirmation, taught Sunday school, sang in the church choir, did all these things. Thank God financially I didn't go bankrupt, but spiritually I was. And what I know today is, you know, my life was bankrupt. My lo physical life was bankrupt, but inside I was too. And so I've learned to fill my coffers, you might say, with the right loving approach to life and I feel abundance and prosperity in all parts of my life today. I know when the spiritual de disease is overcome, the rest of your life falls in place. I'm now connected with the universe that can supply my needs. <laughs> the, the, God's grace is sufficient and I think that's ironic because when I left that church, the last bulletin cover picture had a picture of God's grace is sufficient and it was words but today it's happening in my life things come to me and out of the blue just recently I had a, an increase in my teaching pension and I didn't even know I was up for one but they reviewed my case and said you're making less than the minimum and we're going to give you a raise so you know Money came in out of the absolute blue for me. It was wonderful. And I used to have a fear of financial insecurity. And guess what? It's coming to me, not draining out. So that was a wonderful surprise. So today I don't look to others for my self-worth and validation. And I take care of myself. And the big lesson I've learned is to forgive myself and to forgive all those who harmed me. They taught me how to change my fears and negative energy to experience unconditional love. That's why they came. They came to help me and for me to be able to see that they're my mirror and what I need to do to change. So in forgiving, I now have gratitude and compassion for those people instead of being in hate and bitterness. They played their parts very well. <laughs> I bought a book line and sinker and I visualize them up on a stage taking their bows like they're in a play and I stand up and I applaud them and I say you played your part so well and thank you very much for teaching me the lessons I needed to learn and so today I don't have any remorse about that and the biggest lesson I learned in recovery was to tell my ex-husband when I was still married at the time God forgive him for he knows not what he does God bless him. And when he was attacking me at one point before I got out of the divorce, um, I said that twice. And 
I left the room. I was going to be made into mincemeat, I knew. And um, left the room. Angels literally escorted me out because I was so scared of the whole situation, traumatized me. And um, he never touched me again. That, to me, is the answer of domestic violence, is when you send love, there's nothing to attack. They're not going to hurt you or hit you. There's nothing to retaliate. They're not being hurt and damaged and abused one more time. You haven't pushed whatever button from their abused background to make them want to attack and harm you back. And what would you recommend if, some, if there's someone in the audience listening now, what would you recommend their first step to be? Oh, well, their first step, well, uh, first of all, you have to get honest with yourself that, yes, you do need to get help. And um, I do have some YouTube uh, domestic violence and empowerment YouTubes, which would kind of be a pre-primer to finding a, a, a good 12-step program like Al-Anon or CODA or Adult Children of Alcoholics, something that will give you spiritual tools to move out of the abuse and violence into the love of who you truly are with the correct counseling that goes in and finds the root cause of these because I'm an internationally board certified regression therapist and what I do is I reframe the traumas and abuse into loving solutions and now then there's no more uh, symptoms to worry about they disappear they just aren't there when you've changed your consciousness okay. so could you uh, tell us your uh, website address so that yes uh, my website is Angelica's Gifts, one word, angelicasgifts.com. You can Google my name and it'll come up. I have a lot of YouTube lectures and talks and uh, information out there. And so y you can email me off my website, angelicasgifts.com. I'm willing to answer questions or help if, if they want guidance or information or help. I'd be love to help anyone I can. And I'm just finishing a book, Paradigm Busters. Uh, reveal the real you, uh, which has all of this in great detail with lots of stories and tools for helping people to recover. So, and my first book, Roses Have Thorns, which you had a copy, um, is the chronicles my domestic violence. And of course, my current book I'm finishing will give you the recovery information. Okay, thank you very much for being with us. Well, it's so nice today to have self-love and self-esteem, and I can live in the moment of God's presence, and I can be kind to others and know I finally have come into maturity. It's a wonderful place to be, and I hope all people can join me there. It's a, it's a journey, but it's worth the, worth the work. Thank you. Thank you.